Greetings, loyal airmen and women, and welcome to Airship 27 Productions podcast number 56. I'm your co-host, Chief Engineer Rob Davis, and I'm here alongside my co-host, Captain Ron Fortier. Hey, all you loyal airmen. Yes. <laughs> how, are we go- how are we doing, Rob? Oh. <sighs> Yeah. It's been a, it's been a, str- a long strange trip. Well, who did that? I forget what group did that. They did the song? It's been a long strange trip. Might have been uh, uh, the Grateful Dead. I don't remember. Anyway, oh, I, I, ever I, this year has gone by like a runaway freight train. Yeah, it has. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. And the thing is, uh, the, putting the books together has been really slow this year. Well, you know? yeah, that, that's yeah, and that, that's the irony, the whole situation. Okay, yeah. I mean, you and I have traveled; we've done a lot of shows, et cetera, right? And yeah. and yesterday we got up, and the, the, the joke is that the, there's snow falling up in the high country, in the high <laughs> mountains. Okay, so you know, winter is knocking on our door. But we woke up yesterday morning, and the area, the Front Range, got hit with really high winds. So wow. much so, so much so that tumbleweed was rolling down the street. It, where this stuff comes from, Rob, is I don't know. Okay, it's got to be locked in the foothills, and the the wind just sends it down here. The backyard was filled with tumbleweed. Right? It's full of tumbleweeds, huh? Tumbleweeds. Wow, you are in the west. Oh yeah. So <laughs> at, at one at one point, Valerie says, "Okay, look, we can't go walking in this stuff. Okay, it's just it's way too cold. The wind would take your breath away." So we jump in the car. And we drive maybe two miles to the nearest Walmart. They have a nice little Walmart in nearby Loveland, right across the town yeah. line. So we went in there for no other reason, just to walk around the store for about a half hour, get our walking. Oh, okay. Exercise. Okay. And then pick up a few odds and ends while we were there. All right. Well, the kicker is we're walking through one section and they're putting up all these shelves and displays. Okay. Not for Halloween, because that's already there. Not for Thanksgiving. But for Christmas, they're putting them up there for Christmas. All right. Then, right at one point, I'm standing there over by the video aisles. I'm looking at what new videos are out and, and et cetera, et cetera. And I'm, I'm listening to a conversation with two clerks behind me. And one says to the other one, he says, you realize there's only 10 weeks to Christmas? <sighs> <laughs> oh, oh, only it's 10 and, weeks to Christmas. And then Valerie looked at me. She goes, where the hell did this year go? I said, your clue is as good as mine. All right. It's, it's been nuts. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we, we haven't stopped. It's just like, you know, one thing after another, after another. Uh, but Hey, you know, it's, it's what the heck. Okay. And, and the joke of this is we'll, we'll talk a little bit about it in the show. Cause we, you know, you loyal Emory, you know, we're, we, we've mentioned how slow this year has been production wise. It, you know, it, it, it's, it's just it just has. There's the not much we can do about it. The nature of the beast, right? It this year <laughs> turned out to be a slow year, where the inverse is sales have been phenomenal. Yeah, <laughs> it's like we, you know, it's like are we do we really we need to work this hard? I wonder. Okay, but anyways, uh, when we'll talk about some books coming out, et, et, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, it is the nature of the beast. What's going on? I I've got two more shows. Uh, again, one coming up uh, by the time this airs. Uh, this coming week, I'll be in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska for that little mall show. And November 10th and 11th, I'm going down to Denver for Rocky Mountain Con, which I absolutely love. All right. Uh, and then, you know what? I am so looking forward to wrapping up Rocky Mountain and sitting on my big fat butt and not doing anything <laughs> till the end of the year. I'm tired. Okay. Man. Well- I, I won't tell you what I that that I've actually bought our tables for Windy City already. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, they're, they're I, all- I haven't I haven't sent you the invoice for your half yet, oh. but I I paid for them. It's been oh, good. a couple of no, weeks ago. No, no, I, I, I to, yeah, I need to remember to do that. To send yeah, you the yeah, please do. No, because I'm already <laughs> I'm already seeing it on Facebook. Right, everybody's lining up for the cons for next year, and I'm like, yeah. I got, my, I got my table for Planet Comic Con already. Uh, they're, they're starting to announce uh, guests. And the first one they announced, John Cleese. Oh, my God. From Monty Python. Monty Python. Just, oh, yeah. He was the first guest that they announced. Oh, so, oh, oh. That, yeah. Um, we, yeah, okay. And listen, listen we, we have... 
we have news about another convention guest on this show Uh-oh. today. Okay, so although there's not a lot of pulp stuff, there are things happening. So we should get to it. Um, and guess what? Guess who's lucky enough to start the show with a joke? This this <laughs> month. You lucky people. You you know, every now and then I like to do longer jokes. You and I talk about this. It's nice to have a little story or whatever. But I got to tell you, I heard this one last week. Got it off Facebook. All right. Saw it on Facebook one morning. And it cracked me up. So I told Valerie, who's my barometer, right? And she went, oh, you got to use that in the podcast. You have to use that in the podcast. <laughs> All right. So here we go. First joke of the podcast. This this well-known nerd walks into a bar and goes and sits down. Bartender Sam comes over and says, hey, Harry, how are you doing? Harry goes, not too bloody good. He says, no, what's the matter? He goes, oh, he says, my wife walked into my my office the other day and looked at all my Star Wars stuff and, and stomped her foot down and said she'd had it. Really? What do you mean by that? Well, she told me. It's either Star Wars or me. So what'd you do? Well, I pointed to the door and said, may the divorce be with you. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good that's yeah. that's pretty good I, I, I like that one i'm gonna have to share that with Teresa. <laughs> all you star oh, wars fans oh. out there there you go okay oh, man all right all right i'll let you have the agenda amigo you you take it away all right here we go <laughs> i don't know if i can recover from that uh <laughs> Radio Archives celebrates 13 years. <clears throat> if you've been following the latest from our partners in radio, Audio Pulp Radio Archives, you probably already know they're celebrating their 13th anniversary. That's 13 years of producing and preserving some of the finest old-time radio programs ever heard. That was their reason when they that was the reason they started their enterprise and then later they began recording uh, uh, began a recording phase, hiring some of the finest voice actors available to give audio life to classic pulp stories. Since then, they've become the industry leader in these magnificent recordings, helping to keep pulp history alive in this truly exciting manner. To help celebrate this anniversary, Radio Archives is giving a 50% sale over much of their product line, including the majority of our Airship 27 titles. This sale will run to the end of the year and is the perfect opportunity for all you loyal airmen to fill your Christmas shopping list with some truly wonderful audio disc sets, hours, and some of that other stuff. There's some, there's some, I went over there and looked, there's some really good stuff. Uh, oh, yeah, I mean, really I mean, interesting stuff. Again, that's what we're talking about, okay? I mean, there are classic old radio programs that I'd only ever heard of before. And, and, and you know, you and I both like to read mysteries. And I'm a big fan of Rex Stout's work, those old Nero Wolf mysteries. Yes. All yes. right. So yes. the idea is, I didn't know until Radio Archives that there was actually a Nero Wolf radio series. I didn't either. I knew there were there were some movies and a couple of attempts at a TV uh, show. There were but... several. There were several TV shows, and there were two movies made. And I actually right. picked those up uh, at Windy City from my friend Martin Graham. Right. And, yeah. <laughs> poor, but it's it, it was early Hollywood. Okay, what can I say? But it's the radio shows that got me because apparently they were great adaptations of some of Stout's actual novels. Okay, so I think Sydney Greenstreet is Wolf. Yes, all I rem- right. I remember reading about that that he was that he did near a wolf. Yes. So those wow. are available. radio archives, like hundreds of other great old radio programs. I mean, if you like the shadow, if you like the whisper, gangbusters or the comedy stuff. OK, that's where you need to go to. And this sale, I think, just just blew me out of the water. Uh, Tom Brown is the head honcho over radio archives and made Rob and I aware this past week that this sale was going on. So it behooved us to get the word out to all you loyal airmen, all right? This is a golden opportunity. It really, really is, okay? Again, whether it's old-time radio that you love to collect, whatever, or you'd like to listen 
you know, you're traveling, you're commuting or whatever, and you like to listen to some of the, you know, the new pulp stuff that's being done today. Not only Airship 27, but they're also doing recordings of the classic pulp books, Rob. They're doing Secret Agent X. They're doing, yes. uh, they're doing yes. The Shadow, all the rest of those great I've, classic I've, adventures. I saw some of those. Uh, in that sale, that sale bargain area, yeah, yeah, pretty so, cool stuff. So go go to www.radioarchives.com, check them out, and tell them the guys at Airship Twenty Seven sent you. Yep. There you go. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. All right, so here's here's another little what we want to call kissing cousin to to new pulp, queen of the men's adventure mags. <laughs> Several years ago, thanks to this very podcast show, we became acquainted with Bob Dice an authority on men's adventure magazines of the 50s and 60s. Bob pretty much educated us on how the MAMs, as they are called, all right, were part of the real evolution of the pulps after World War II. And he and his partner, Wyatt Dole, were in the process of starting their own publishing house, which would focus on the history of those garish publications. Thus, their new texture books was formed and in the intervening years, they have done a dozen truly beautiful books, both in softback and hardcover. Each features either a specific personality, a la art books by certain great illustrators of the MAMs, right. or the outlandish adventure story themes that often appear in <laughs> such titles as Weasels Written My Flesh or Barbarians <laughs> on Bikes. <laughs> 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 We're not making this up, folks. No, all right. No, <laughs> all right, all right. So yeah. those are some of their earlier offerings, and all of them uh, being an honest part of what they now call the Men's Adventure Library. All right. Well, Bob and Wyatt recently released their latest book, and this one is an extra special uh, project, as it is all about the Swedish-born model Ava Lind, who for several decades posed for many of those ma'ams, much like the late actor model Steve Holland, who was the go-to model for the definitive He-Man look, all right? I mean, he even posed for Doc Savage, okay? Yep. Miss Lynn's loveliness was not only captured in hundreds of dramatic illustrations, she was also featured in actual photo shoots. The new book entitled Ava, Men's Adventure Supermodel, <laughs> uh -huh. check, that check that out huh? is wow, that that's nice? nice yeah all right that's nice it's now available at amazon in both paperback and hardcover it not only collects many wonderful photos and illustrations it also details her career both as a model and actress having appeared in both movies and television for many many years Still active today, Miss Lynn provides her own insightful memoirs throughout the volume, giving it an authentic, intimate look back at a very different world. We tip our pulp fedoras to New Texture Book for another great title all pulp fans will love. <laughs> and here's the big news that I just found out today, Rob. All right. Uh -oh. Oh, this is great. I, I love this. This is, this is amazing. Apparently, Bob and Wyatt have done such a great job promoting this new book, all right, that our good buddy, Mike Chomko, got wind of that. And Mike's, Mike and other people on the governing board of Pulp Fest right. got, got in touch with Bob and put forth the idea of would it be possible to invite Ava Lind to come to Pulp Fest next year and cool. be their special guest. Cool. She's, she's agreed. They're rolling out the red carpet for her. And as you'll recall, the one and only time we did the Pittsburgh show, they had a 90-year-old uh, lady artist who would worked in the pulps. Right. And on Saturday night of the con, she gave a little talk about her history. She was interviewed and talked about her career, right. which, which was yep. one of the finest nights I've ever spent at a pulp convention. You yes. and I absolutely yeah, loved it. A lot it. of fun. Yeah. Okay, well, this is what they're going to do with Miss Lynn. She is going to be on stage with Bob and Wyatt, who will be interviewing her about her career as a supermodel in the days of the Men's Adventure magazine. So, hey, you know, a tip of the hat to, to Chomko and his buddies at Pulp Fest, okay? And listen, uh, if you live anywhere on the East Coast or near, or near Pittsburgh, 
make your reservations now because that night sounds like it's going to be another big one. Yeah, that that does sound like fun. I, I when I when I found that out, I was like, and we're not going to be there. <laughs> No, oh. that, that, hopefully this will help them get a few more people in the door and that that makes it more likely that we will go if they can get enough people to start coming to that show so everybody out there in that area go so we can go oh, back go to pulp fest please go to pulp fest <laughs> yeah yeah oh. well okay yeah. okay rob your turn all right my turn my toin uh, <laughs> okay <laughs> Airship 27 creators are everywhere. Recently, veteran new pulp writer John Simcoe was a guest at a small one-day book show in rural northern Pennsylvania. Speaking of Pennsylvania, uh, imagine his surprise when he spotted a copy of Airship 27 Productions' latest Domino Lady volume displayed atop the table of a lovely young lady. It turned it turned right out now. she was none... <laughs> Not my fault. It turned out she was none other than one of our newest creators, Samantha Lionheart. Samantha, while in a master's program on fiction writing, had attended a lecture by our pal Fred Adams Jr. After the talk, she introduced herself to Fred, and he told her all about New Pulp, etc., all of which led her to contribute that terrific domino lady and become one of our regulars. It's just amusing how she and... And John should end up, end up at the same little book show. Like we said, our new pulp people are everywhere. <laughs> look out. They're everywhere. Yeah. Hey, look, uh, all you loyal airmen uh, either can check out my Facebook page. I posted because John took a picture of Samantha ah. uh, sitting at her table. And I've posted it at my Facebook page and the Airship 27 Facebook page. Uh, and, and she looks very happy and, and, and very, <laughs> very like she belongs there. Oh, she, she looks very comfortable. You know, she's got a little whimsical smile on her face. All right. And this is a new writer. All right. Just, just spreading her wings and trust me, people, you are going to be hearing a lot more about Samantha Lionheart. Okay. Uh, the domino lady she wrote blew me away. Uh, and it's it's easily one of the reasons that book is selling as well as it does. She she knows what she's doing. She's a good writer. And Rob, the next thing she's doing for us is she's writing a mythological adventure for Pulp Mythology Volume Two. Oh, cool! Yeah, yeah. yeah. She looked yeah. at our, she looked at our roster, right? The updates I sent to all our creators, and got a hold of me a few months back and said. Uh, are you planning a, a second volume of pulp mythology? I said, most assuredly, I get writers on yeah. board and we put books together. She says, well, she says, sign me up. I want to write one. So thank you, Samantha. Hey. All right. Cool. Yeah. And those of you who may not be on Facebook, still follow my blog every Friday morning. I've also copied that picture there so you can get a shot of Samantha. And I made sure to get a picture of John that was snapped while he was at the convention as well. So there you go. Two new pulp writers all in this little book show. It's I think that Rob speaks for how popular the genre is becoming. Yeah, well, and this our next uh, little piece here about uh, third quarter sales will kind of say something about that as well. Yep. Uh, uh, and I'll go, I'll jump right into it. Or wait a minute. This one's yours, isn't it? Yes, There's it is. Four, this, this one's yours. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Here, so, jump, yeah, trying yeah. to jump the gun here. Okay. <laughs> he wants to take over the show. What can I do? All right. <laughs> Third quarter sales. All right. The last day of September ended our third financial quarter. And when Amazon sent in the sales results, we were as ever intrigued. There are no surprises in that the best selling titles were our volumes of Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Whereas we were really happy to see a considerable jump in sales in our three Bass Reeves books. Yeah. Front Bass Reeves Frontier Lawman series. Yeah, they're, they're catching on. All right. We'd like to believe these books are slowly gaining a much larger audience and helping to bring Reeves' story to the public at large. It is a history that needs to be known. The three Domino Lady books also had brisk sales, again, not unexpected. Ted Hammond's three covers featuring the sexy adventure are always going to grab people's attention. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The one true surprise, at least for this guy, of the entire quarter 
was the huge success <laughs> of Michael Housel's second persona novel, Green Flesh Demons. It sold through the roof, earning the entire team really nice royalty checks. As to why it sold, well, that's up for debate. Chris Routing's cover is gorgeous for sure. It's really an, an, an awesome pulp cover. And we all know that Arthur Housel has a way of going the extra mile to promote his own work, which results in these kinds of rewards. We are constantly urging all our creators to keep promoting, keep selling. Those who do reap the benefits. Yep. It's, I, I can tell when somebody's been promoting their book because their numbers will go up a little bit. So, right, right. That's, that's you know, all. I mean, and, and we're just a little outfit. Uh, and Michael Vance does, does our promotional work, but there's only so much he can do. Uh, it, 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 it helps if somebody's concentrating on that, their particular book and can really push it. If we were a big outfit, we'd have a big advertising budget. We'd push it all and we'd do a lot of that ourselves, but we're, we're a tiny outfit and it really is kind of behooves those who, uh, uh, create the books to, to put a little effort and help us, help us promote them. Right, uh, right, right. They're going to, they're going to reap the benefits as you so, just yeah, said. Yeah, right, right, right. right. Yeah. And, and yeah, and, and again, it, it, we both seen that. We both seen that. And so we constantly, constantly harp it on them. Okay. Data comes across today. And, and then we both know that we're, you know, we're living in this digital age now where every single day, whether it's on, on the PC, the internet, or it's on television, radio, whatever, right? Media constantly is shoving new data at us every <laughs> single day. Every single day, the world turns over. Every 24 hours, there's more, more things to look at, more things to absorb. It's, it's the constant flow. And what I try to get across to our creators, Rob, our writers, especially our writers, all right, once a book has been published, we can promote it so long and have it out there. And its awareness or, or attention getting to its audience is going to be very limited right. because within a week or so, they'll move on to other things and then other things. Okay. Well, the secret of what we're talking about is don't let that happen. Create a schedule. And then uh, recently, um, we, uh, we've talked about the people that we know. Our colleagues are really good at self-promotion. Some of them are and very, very good. Bobby Nash, top of the list. And, yep. re and recently, in the last year or so, I have seen Derek Ferguson. Yes. All right. All right. Preach this gospel. And yes. it, it seems like every other day, Derek has one of his titles up on Facebook, either his page or another page. And that same title will reappear in three or four weeks as he rotates through all the books he's done. And when he's finished, he starts again. He never stops putting them up where people yeah. can see them. If it's if it's out there and cycling through, so it, it, you, you whoever you didn't catch the first time it went through, maybe you'll catch them the second time. And he and it's just it's you're just screening them out. You know, right? Right. I I remember the 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 lesson to me with that. All right. Was was the late Stan Lee, when uh, an interviewer asked him one day, who was when he, when Marvel had first, you know, been launched and been around for a couple of years, an interview asked Stan that you know, well, you know, Spider Man's been around for two years now. Why on earth, you know, at the start of every page of every single issue, do you have to have that little paragraph that explains his origin? And Stan's answer, and I, I'm sure you're familiar with it, was. Well, because that issue will be somebody's first issue as Spider-Man, who right. has never heard the origin story. So if right. we just give it once, they're, they're going to be lost. How can they come into this adventure and have fun? All right. So, you know, writers and artists out there, we promote your books. You get them out. They last. You know, they have, you have all this, this attention going on for a month, a couple months. But eventually it behooves you. It's up to you that two or three months down the line, put it back up on Facebook. Put it back up on social media. Show it to your friends a second time. Never, ever stop showing your wares. And that's how you make sales. Ah. Yep. Okay. Oh, and hey, uh -oh. This, is, this is, no, this isn't in the agenda, but we got to talk about this. Okay. We okay. Have, all right. Because, because the third quarter sales and whatever, we're back there. You and I have just wrapped up. You finished your portion of accounting. Right. We've gotten the royalty checks and you right. did your accounting. You send them to me. And so I've spent the, over the weekend breaking down who's getting what. 
from each individual book. Part of that also includes, Rob, making out the checks and making envelopes. So in the process of doing this, this was not a scientific study by any means, but the point is I'm, I'm writing checks, I'm writing checks, I'm writing checks, and it dawned on me, and I said, you know, I want to ask Rob this in the podcast, all right? We have creators that live all over the world, not only in the U.S., but Canada, Britain, Australia. We have writers from India now, everywhere. Mm -hmm. okay. Which two U.S. states do you believe are the biggest concentration of Airship 27 writers? Illinois. Florida. No. Illinois is right. Okay. Illinois is one. The other one? Oklahoma. Oh, duh. If I'd have stopped to think about it, I would have realized. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Oklahoma. It's yeah. like every, every, every other check I'm making out is Illinois. Every other check after that is Oklahoma. And then it starts to honest. Okay, I get, I get Illinois to a point, you know. Oklahoma, we have a lot of writers in Oklahoma. Yeah. You know, I mean, off the top yeah. of my head, Terry Alexander, Michael Vance himself, Brad Sinor, all right, R.A. Jones, all right? So, I mean, they make up the bulk. Uh, there are others, too. So, yeah. yeah. And then there's, there's some in, 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 the, in that same area. I, do we, don't we have some in Texas as well? <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. We, have, we have A.J. Porter, who is a British expatriate <laughs> all right he's an american he is an american who lives ready okay because we're talking about this like who lives in flugerville <laughs> flugerville what a, Flug what a name Flug some Flug guy named fluger started a town flugerville wow. texas that's where alan lives he's okay Anyway, so there you go yeah I, I an interesting little factoid that i just wanted to throw out there all right illinois and oklahoma are homes are are obviously good homes for new pulp writers. Huh. Who'd have I thought? Would, yeah, yeah. Who who would have who who'd have thunk, as they used to say. Yep. But yeah, that's that's great. Uh but <laughs> well let's I guess we'll move on to our to our next item on the agenda. Uh this. released since our last show. Since it's been kind of slow, uh actually nothing has been <laughs> released since our last show. As we've mentioned on several earlier episodes and earlier to, uh, today, uh, for multiple reasons, this has been a fl very slow year production-wise. There's nothing wrong with that, uh, as we never have a hard and fast schedule that we adhere to. Our policy has always been when both the text and art are completed, then we get a book out. Whereas this year, art has been slow in coming in, and so books are held up. Uh, because of that, we certainly applaud the patience of our writers who who then who who then wait whose waits then become exceedingly long. That is a straight not the grim sentence. But we do have several projects nearing completion and we'll discuss the next. Fingers crossed production will steadily speed up as we near the end of twenty nineteen. You know, the last few years have been I've been working my fingers to the bone. Uh, and so a little bit of a reprieve is kind of okay. <laughs> now, now the, the one drawback to this is since all the, all the other artists were having problems, I didn't get to spread mine out this year. The ones that I work on, they all got kind of bunched together. So I was, I got dumped on all of a sudden. And uh, so I've got, I finished one project and then I'm going, okay, well, I can assemble another book. Well, there's not another book to assemble. So then I've got to do illustrations on the next one. I kind of like to mix it up, but this year has been very little mixing. Yeah, so, it's, yeah, it's, it, yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been the, weird. The it is. Yeah, the and, and right. And, and I don't know, karma has a way of, you know, because, because it allows you to do the project with R.A. Jones. All right. Uh -huh. The art project. Okay. I've got. I've got one page left to do. One page <laughs> left on that first issue. All I right. Got, I got the next to last page done last night. So that's awesome. That's great. And yeah, yeah. and, and w without getting into it, because I don't want to mention this, but uh, it's also allowed me 
uh, to get involved with a project that I've been very leery about doing for many years and I'm now doing and and it's coming along. Uh, but I will make that reveal when the book okay. is ready to go. But this year made that possible because, again, I didn't have a lot of writing commitments of my own. And I didn't have a lot of books to read and edit like I yeah. usually do. So, again, there was, there was an opportunity for both of us to, you know, do other things that we had put off for a while. So it, it, it balances out in the end. All right. So usually, usually. Yeah. Yeah. So what's coming next? Hopefully by the time you are listening to this show, we will have posted another Kindle special. This one titled The Death of Robin Hood by I.A. Watson. This came about when Ian suggested to us that we do an omnibus edition of the Robin Hood books, of which there were four titles. We had had the trilogy that made up the actual saga. And then afterwards we did a collection of short stories by Ian. All right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So all, all the books, you know, are great. And we love the idea of an omnibus edition that would collect all four of them together. Rob, re, Rob even went as far as to do a brand new cover uh, for the omnibus. Then just when we thought things were good to go. Right? Yeah, I had the book almost almost ready to go. Yeah, okay. And Ian, Ian put his hands up and said, stop, stop. He suggested, uh, I'd like to write one more story to cap it off. <laughs> oh, oh. And who are we to say no, all right? And, and that no, was, no, no, no. And that was the death of Robin Hood. And we, we eagerly agreed it was it was a great idea and would be the new feature in the giant omnibus edition, which, you know, nobody who bought the other four books had seen. OK, but then, OK, all well and good until my amigo here says, well, you know, we ought to make that a Kindle only so people can get a hold of it there. And that's exactly what we've done. If everything goes according to schedule, Rob will hopefully uh, do three new illustrations yep. for the death. OK. And yep. a special cover for the Kindle edition for the death of Robin Hood. And as of now, and it will soon be available at Kindle only. Hopefully by year's end, we'll have a giant omnibus put together and we'll offer that in print as we do all our titles. Uh, and Rob, I got to tell you, I have you read uh, the story yet? I've, I've finished it and I've, and I've done my thumb, the thumbnails for the three illustrations. Yeah. There's some, there's some sequences there where you, you, you know, the little, oh. the tears start welling up in your eyes. Uh, yeah, yeah. I teared it's, up. It's, I it's teared typical up when I got it. I.A. Watson. It's, it's excellent storytelling. Uh, the characters are, are spot on uh, all of them, not just Robin and Marion and, and, but every, every character spot on there. There's the same folks that were in the, the, the previous books. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you, you, it's, it's a tear, tear it's a tearjerker. At Look, I mean, yeah. you know, Ian, Ian is an incredible writer uh, and, and we have been so lucky uh, when he crossed paths with Airship 27, almost about the time we got started uh, because he came to us uh, with, uh, with Sherlock Holmes and made his mark there. There's no if, ands or buts about that. But yeah. then when he proposed Robin Hood. We had no idea what he was going to do. And I, you know, as much as I love all his Sherlock Holmes stuff and everything else he's ever done, I really think with Death of Robin Hood being the capstone to this, like, what, nine, ten year project of his, all right? Yeah. I really, th I really think the Robin Hood saga will eventually be looked at as Ian's magnus opus. I, I really think it's, it's some of his finest writing that we've published. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just, uh, he knocks it out of the park. I, I, he, he takes a legendary character and imbues him with some of the, the psychological underpinnings in, that modern stories have. Uh, he, there's, there's all the elements are there for the, for the, uh, the fans of the, of the old Robin hood stories. In fact, uh, Ian, Ian's got footnotes galore. In fact, this omnibus, that's one of the things he did. He, oh, I sent him the, the collected uh, collection. I put them all together, put all the books together in one, one. He took what, several weeks and he went through and he fixed all the footnotes because some of them were, you know, you, when you put them in one volume and then the next volume, uh, there are some things that repeat 
some okay. footnotes repeat right, what right. was in the previous volume. Right. So he, he called all those out. Plus, you know, he tightened, tightened all that, that kind of stuff up. And then we reassembled the book again. And then the, that final death of Robin Hood story. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's some of his finest writing. Yeah. I really enjoy his Sherlock Holmes, but I, I, I definitely think the Robin Hood stuff is top notch writing from from Ian. Just yeah, I, I look. I mean, yeah. once 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 we've got the omnibus. I mean, when we all got to talking about it, when Ian first brought it up to us, and I like the idea. And now after what he's done with with this death of Robin Hood, and seeing your cover for the omnibus, I mean, that's definitely a, you know I like and and I'm proud of every single thing that we do here at Airship Twenty Seven. I really am. But this thing is unique, and I cannot wait to have my own copy of <laughs> The Legend of Robin Hood, which is the overall title of the omnibus, sitting up there on a shelf behind me onto the side here in my library, all right? that That's a volume. It, yeah. it, look, if you love classic adventure, if you've ever enjoyed any Robin Hood of any incarnation at all, you cannot miss this omnibus, all right? Great. We guarantee you, you are going to love it. Yeah. Yeah, if nothing else, pick up the Kindle. Uh, and each book has each one of the books has its own Kindle version, which is why, and and I had no I no inkling to do it to do the uh, omnibus as a as no. a uh, a Kindle book because we've already got the other ones in in Kindle format and they're they're fairly inexpensive. But then I thought, well, we've got this new story. Well, let's throw that in as a Kindle. So you can you just pick up one of the Kindles. They're fairly inexpensive and go with go with one of those. Right and see see if you like them uh, or or a PDF from our from our website for that matter, but uh, I, I personally I like having the book in front of me to actually read. I've done I I have some Kindle I have some books on Kindle, but uh, they're and they're great for when I'm traveling, but uh, they they just don't make up for the fact you got that physical book in your hand. I, I'm an old fashioned guy in that way. So me too, yeah. me yeah. too. All right, so what's coming? What's possibly coming after that, Rob? <laughs> well, uh, Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective number 14, volume 14. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, as of this recording, the new Consulting Detective is being proofread. I finished all the interior illustrations and Ted Hammond turned in a great cover. His interpretation of Holmes and Watson is a fresh one. And we think fans of the series will get a kick out of it. This volume features a novella by I.A. Watson, a regular length tale by Ray Lovato, and two short shorts by newcomer David Friend. This is David's first work for Airship 27, and we hope it won't be his last. Uh, and, and as usual, uh, everybody knocked it out of the park. These are all great, great Sherlock Holmes uh, tales. Very much like uh, it, the ones that Arthur Conan Doyle wrote, and uh, I, I enjoyed the heck out of illustrating it, and I can't wait to get a copy of it to put back on my shelf, uh, and to put it out and and uh, see it. the fans gobble this one up too. Every every time we put one out, it, it just sells like sells like hotcakes. Uh, yeah, that's what oh, yeah. that's part of why we keep doing them. Plus. They're a lot of fun. Oh, oh my, oh my lord! <laughs> they're yes. a lot of fun. I, I have to tell you this, okay? Because this, you know, obviously, there there are times when when things just happen, and and you know, you clap your hands because we had set up this schedule to do this, re you know, recording this afternoon. So last night, all right, uh, Sunday night, my wife and I, you know, were watching television, and before our regular shows come on, there was like an hour gap. So Valerie starts scrolling, and we come across PBS, Colorado PBS. Mm -hmm. And there, listed on the schedule, is a one-hour special, all right, titled Sherlock Holmes versus Arthur Conan Doyle. Huh. And, Valerie, and Valerie looked at me, and she says, I put it on, 60 minutes, what the heck? But I had an idea, and sure enough, it came on. I I don't know who the production company was. But it was British British made. Okay. Jobs, okay. But basically, it was like a dissertation or essay, a visual video essay, on the issue of how Doyle came to hate Sherlock Holmes. Oh, 
Yeah. Right? yeah. All right. And it Which showed. He did. Right. It showed his biography. It showed the creation of Holmes. I learned a lot of things, Rob, that I didn't know. How, you know, the character, first of all, the first couple of stories that weren't actually successful. Okay. Back and forth, back and forth until he becomes successful. But then Doyle never really looked at him as serious literature because he wanted to write adventure novels. Uh, what is it? Uh, uh, Walter Scott was his. Yeah. Hero. He wanted to write those, you know, so he wrote a thing called the white company and a bunch of other things. None of but, which did that well. They did right, okay. Right. But, but eventually he kept getting pulled back as we know to write homes because the fans wouldn't let it go. And even, even though I was aware of all this history, okay. It really, it, it, it hit the point. All right. That, you know, again, some, uh, there were a lot of, you know, well-known writers who participated in this little documentary and they were talking about the fact that it's all too rare and amazing in the psyche of a people, of a culture that a fictional character will eventually outshine his creator to the point where as they ended the, you know, the hour uh, up to Doyle's death and whatever, and he had other successes, he had created uh, George Challenger. Right. And the Lost World, and and you know he had a fan a fan base for that as well, but his his he was always disappointed. I think in that it was Holmes that was the most successful, and even by the time of his death, Holmes had made it the stage, early silent films, all right, et cetera, et cetera. And they were showing all the books that have come out, and and this is where I I chuckled a little bit because there have since been 125 novels, and I went. That is way too wrong. Okay, there is there's thousands of Sherlock Holmes novels out there. Just go yeah. to Amazon, write his name, and then here comes the flood. Yeah, okay? wait, wait, wait as it, it scrolls. Yeah. yeah, all right. It never stops, okay? Including yours truly, Airship 27, all right? Yeah, yeah. So, so, I mean, the thing is, I'm trying to think who else. They, they also named uh, uh, James Bond, all right? And the fact that Ian Fleming, eventually tried to kill him off and he did in two novels and that wouldn't work because that's all the publishers wanted they wanted more james bond okay and it's 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 a strange dichotomy of how that all comes to be because again and this is what they said and it was the theme of the whole show rob okay is that basically you could go around the world today all right stop any person on the street corner and say who's out to conan doyle and i'm going to guarantee you nine out of ten won't know who he is but you can say and ask who Sherlock Holmes, and they will tell you. Holmes won out in the end. What yep. a strange yep. story. What a strange story. But hey, fans, keep in mind, we have never at Airship 27 lost our respect and reverence for Arthur Conan Doyle, who in this documentary showed what an incredible life he lived. Even into, into his senior years, he volunteered for military duty. He yeah. wasn't War wars, for heaven's sakes, all right? When he was in his 50s, all right? He was a patriot to no end, all right? A, a, a family man, a good father, all those kind of things, and did remarkable things. He invented the, the, the life preserver, all right? And other things. You know, Valerie kept looking at me and she goes, did you know all this stuff? And I went, well, I know maybe 70% of it. I've got a decent biography of, of Doyle in my library, which I read many years ago. Uh, because of my fascination with him and, and, and Holmes. But, boy, this show showed even more stuff like that. Right? Yeah, there's, was, yeah, you start digging in, and it just gets deeper and deeper. I mean, there, there are a couple of uh, uh, sad things that, that hap happened with him. He was, he was heavily into spiritual, spirituality, and uh, there was a whole uh, – there were several things about – that which all got, came about after World War One and right. his oldest son dying in the war. Yeah, I think yeah. he got kind of got caught up in in all that because of uh, you know, trying so to reach out to to and, and uh, I think his first wife too passed away if I recall yes, correctly. Did. Yes, did. And so you know there was all that that rolling around in his head, and then there was something even though he was he wrote about a guy. Sherlock Holmes, who who did not believe in spirituality at all, his most famous character uh, was was uh, a pure, pure man science. of science, pure, pure man, man of science, of science. Yep. and yet here he was, he got caught up in spirituality. So there's yep. there's that going on as well. But uh, but other the, but he was a, a phenomenal man. I mean, we've all got 
it, it, all of us have our little flaws and our di- different as- aspects of our personality. So, but what an incredible life he had. Yep. Just and of course, and that, that works it's in itself because, like you know, again, that that whole idea of what amazing things he accomplished in his, in one lifetime. And and I looked at Valerie and I said, well, yeah, because. Of all that, this is the man who fathered Sherlock Holmes, one of the greatest fictional characters of our times, hands on. Okay. And after you and I and Airship 27 are long gone in history, yeah. they'll still be reading Sherlock Holmes stories. All right. It's, it's, it's a done deal. So <laughs> crazy stuff. Okay. You can have that last little agenda. Okay. Sinbad. Yep. Yep. Okay. Well, actually, yeah, there's, well, there's more, but yeah. The, the Sinbad, The New Adventures, Volume 6. Since our last show, Adam Shaw turned in a truly fantastic cover. Sadly, we are still waiting on Mexican artist Jesus Rodriguez to finish up the last three interior illustrations. That's been the, that's been the bugaboo this year. It's been the artwork. Uh, just it, it, And it's, you know, we get an artist on a book and, and he gets sick. Or, you know, something happens in his family. Or her family, or you know, something happens. So it's just been one of those years. But okay, so wrapping up our travels, depending on when this airs, Ron will be in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska for the third annual High Plains Mini Con. Then he'll head south for Rocky Mountain Con in Denver, November 10th and 11th, which wraps up Ron's 2019. Yay! After which, he plans a very long nap. <laughs> we'll have to start calling him Rip Van Winkle. There you go. <laughs> Rip, Rip Van Fortier. Oh, uh, my Lord. So, oh, What about you? What, what about you? What's what between now and the end of the year? Um, What's happening with me? I, I, I don't have any shows to go to. Uh, or, or And for that matter, I'm not that much interested. What I do have going on is, you know, I, I, one of the part-time jobs that I have is uh, driving for Columbia college, the local local college in Columbia, Missouri. And uh, there's a, there's a group uh, that I, that I drive every year, the mock trial group. And I think what was a couple of weeks ago, we went to uh, St. Louis. And then uh, I think in a couple of weeks from now, we're going to go to Bloomington, Illinois. Then there's also some some other uh, sports sporting groups. Uh, the art clubs going to St. Louis. In fact, I'm driving tomorrow. I'm taking taking. Uh, I believe it's uh, the science club from the college is go. No, that's it's a class because this is a lab. But it's but they're going to the zoo in St. Louis tomorrow, All right. and I'm going to drive them there. All and right. Uh, then the art club on Friday is going to. I think it's. I think we're going back to St. Louis again. It could be. Could be Kansas City, but I believe it's St. Louis. There's both. There's. That's what's great about Missouri. On either side of the state, we've got Kansas City and St. Louis, and they both have great art museums. Oh, that's nice. Uh, the, that's and nice. The, the St. Louis Zoo is just is a world renowned one. the The Kansas City one is a good zoo, but it's not quite that level. But uh, but. Even so, it's still it's still something to go see. Uh, so it's it's an it's nice that we're right in the middle of the state between those two. Right, right. So you know, go other way to really cool stuff like that. So I'll be busy with that sort of thing. Uh, I'll, that's those are my travels this time of year. But uh, and, but as as we were talking about, you and I were talking about earlier, and I think I even mentioned it early in the podcast. Uh, uh, Planet Comic Con is coming up. I believe it's in March. Yeah, March, I believe. And uh, really looking forward to that. That's 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 my biggie of the year. That mm-hmm. that thing just. I've been going to it for. Uh, it, it'll have its twenty first anniversary. Wow. This, yeah, last wow. year was twentieth anniversary. This will be the twenty first of these, and I've been to all of them but one, and it's. Windy City's fault that I missed the one because it, it was on the same. The very first Windy City we went to was the same weekend as Planet Comic Con, and I'd already committed to going to Windy City, and uh, I, I don't regret it one bit because it's been it's been a great show for us ever since then, and yeah, I'm yeah. glad they haven't conflicted since then too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hate I, to have to pick. 
yeah, no, no, you shouldn't have to either. But it, it seems like over the last few years, we've talked about this on the show before. There are a lot of more conventions popping up right and left. And, you know, just talking about that, uh, it brings to mind, uh, you know, my, my, my official protege, my young buddy, Todd <laughs> Jones, uh, is getting into the con business. And he, is, he has created a thing, a uh, license called Wicked West Comic Expo. <laughs> that that will that will uh debut next memorial day weekend here in ah. here, here in colorado uh it's it's at a it's at a venue called the ranch in nearby loveland it's the adjacent okay. town to fort collins all right yeah and it's a huge venue with tons of free parking which all of us are well, there that that makes a huge difference it really does yeah so uh, we're, we're, we're thrilled and excited about that and uh, you know, he's got a lot of work. I, I, you know, myself and several of his other friends here in town have been helping him uh, do that, put that together and in any way we can, shape or form, you know. Uh, now, unfortunately, that's a weekend that my family and I uh, travel. We do we do special travels on Memorial Day weekend. So I'm, I will not be able to join that one. Unfortunately, I'd like to because that because I, I'm, I'm I, I like the Colorado area. There's a lot of great fans there. I, I've had, I've been out there twice now and both times I did, I did very well financially. Plus I got to meet a lot of really cool folks. Yeah. So it would be nice to go back, but that, that is unfortunately a, a weekend that I have booked every year. <laughs> so that, that... Uh, Hey, I'm going to give out one more piece of news and then we will let you get to your joke. Okay. Mm. All right. And we'll look to wrap up uh, episode number 56. All right. 56, uh, yeah. But this, this is for all you comic book lovers out there. Uh, Rob already knows this because he, you know, he's mentioned uh, visiting us in Fort Collins on several occasions. And so he is well aware that a member of our local comic group is none other than uh, Eisner Award winning writer, Mike Barron. And Mike, uh, Mike has lately uh, become a very good novelist. He's done some horror fiction in the last couple of years that's gotten some stellar reviews, believe me. All right. And I've read a few of them, had the pleasure of doing so. Uh, so regardless of genres, Mike knows how to write. Yeah. And, and just today, uh, I don't know if he got bugged by fans or not, Rob, but today he announced on Facebook he is actually writing a Badger novel. Oh, I did. I saw that on Facebook. Yes. So I wanted yeah. to. Give, I wanted to give that a shout out in case Mike listens to, to this episode. Uh, I think it's an awesome idea. Uh, I love that character. I think it's yeah. one of the wonkiest, most original <laughs> comic characters ever. ever Absolutely. Devised. Absolutely. Yeah. Funny, so I, funny, serious. Uh, uh, martial uh, arts. Uh, uh, yeah, he threw the kitchen sink into yeah, that. Yeah, just yeah, everything's okay. in there. But it, it, it's, the comic was a great deal of fun. Uh, so there is going to be a Badger novel. You wow. like fans of <laughs> Way to go, Mike. All right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Well, let's see here. Okay, because I, I as as usual, I picked I picked out three different jokes, uh, not knowing what Ron's going to do. So sometimes, you know, just to make sure I have have a couple of different things. Uh, I've got I've got a, sh a couple of short ones, but I'm going to go with the longer one. So, and this one is, uh, yeah, okay, a Canadian woman lives with her family in a forest near the border with the U.S. One autumn evening, her son comes home from town holding a letter. He approaches the woman and says, according to this letter, the United States wants to consider this area as part of Montana. The Canadian government agrees, but says that since they were the only family living here, they want our permission to sign this land over to the U.S. The woman jumps up out of her chair and exclaims, where do I sign? I don't think I, I can stand another Canadian winter. <laughs> Okay. Oh man, that's beautiful. That's just... <laughs> oh the world we live in. Oh my, that's aces, Rob. I like that. That's that's. <laughs> I don't think I can stand another. Oh God, hey. Uh... 
<laughs> yeah, I will be repeating that one. I will definitely be repeating that one all over Colorado. Yes, yes. Hey, look, uh, we've come we've come to the end of the show as ever, loyal airmen. Another and once again, <laughs> that you will never ever get back. I no, guarantee no, no, no. you. All right, but you know what? Uh, it, it, again, the, the show's what the last couple of episodes. Uh, we're hitting ballparks of a hundred uh, views, a hundred ninety views. All right. It, it's, oh. it's, it's ranging now between 85 and 100. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. No, all of you out there. Okay. This only happens because of word of mouth and, and you are the guys who do it and make it happen. And we really appreciate it. Uh, obviously, as you can tell, we have a ball doing this and getting together with you guys. Uh, and we really appreciate you taking the time and, and supporting everything we do at Airship 27. Um, again, even as slow as this year has been, <laughs> you guys have gone out and bought our books in, in really record numbers. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm thrilled to death with uh, how well we've done with this, how slow we've gone. So, yeah. yeah. So thank, again, thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yes. Share with us. That's we've got, we've got some, it. we've got some good titles. We've mentioned some of them here and there are more in the wings. Some really, really good stuff is on its way. Uh, so again, and a tip of the hat to, to Sparky Brant Fowler, as always, giving credit where credit is due. And that's it, my friend. Uh, go ahead and sign out and we'll All right. ship back to Hangar 27. <laughs> <laughs> this is your chief engineer, Rob Davis, signing off. And as ever, Captain Ron says, down ship. This has been a Gonzo Goose production. Bonk!